Recording in progress.
good morning. Please come and sit up front because it's so crowded. Um, I think that uh, welcome to this uh, networking session of the, the Dynamic Coalition. <coughs> The Dynamic Coalition on Internet Security, Safety, and Standards. Some more people are moving in, so um, that's quite timely. Um, this Dynamic Coalition is just like the previous session here on the deployment of Internet standards. And the reason that that is necessary is that the uptake of cybersecurity-related Internet standards and security best practices is not being uptaken in a very well way. Um, from, from there, we tried to make the internet more secure and safer. That's the same what the internet.nl uh, people were saying just now. Um, the reason that we have this session is to promote our work for 2023. And tomorrow at 1615 in the large briefing room, we will be presenting our first reports. We are actually going to uh, go through a few presentations and I'll make my introduction as short as possible so that the people presenting our future work have the ample time to do so. We have in total uh, five presentations, although I do not see the chair of working group one. So I'm gonna ask Mark and Mr. Nicholas an email that he has to do right now. Well, Joao, could, could you send Nicholas an email that he's supposed to present? Yeah. Who is here? Okay. Then we'll start with working group two and then come back to Nicholas. Uh, thank you. Um, we have Teuntje Manders here with us from, from the Netherlands and she's part of the team that has made the report and she is going to, uh, to present on, uh, on the future of the, our working group two, which is on education and skills. And the reason that topic is there is because there's a huge gap between the skills that are offered by tertiary cybersecurity education and the demands that, in general, the, the society and industry makes. So we are going to present the report formally tomorrow, and we will not really go into that here. We do that tomorrow with official handouts to the MAG chair, Paul Nitchell. And But Tönk is going to present on what we are going to do with the outcomes and uh, the ideas of the report and what our future for 2023 is. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction, Wout. I'm Teuntje Manders. I'm from the Netherlands and I joined the IS3C not that long ago. Um, I helped on the research on the gap between the skills of tertiary graduates and what people in the industry expect. And yeah, as Wout said, the official report will be presented tomorrow, so I'm not going to talk about that yet, but I am going to talk about the future. Um, and the goals for 2023 are as follows. First of all, we will refine and pilot the competence model with partners in several different countries and regions of the world to gather input and insight into means of implementation. The second goal is that we plan to work with experts from diverse backgrounds and sectors to begin developing an education kit that can be used in educational institutions and also by individuals in the context of lifelong learning. Third is we will continue collaboration with education and industry sectors to find ways to improve knowledge sharing and collect good practices. We also plan to look into means of scaling up some of the good practices that have been identified in the study. And finally, we are very eager to work with industry and education leaders to look at ways that careers in the cybersecurity sector could be made more appealing and accessible to young people and especially girls. Um, that's our plans for the next year. Uh, thank you, thank you. And that is uh, something where we're going to look for support for and contribution for because these panels that we want to send up will take a lot of effort from people around the world to work together in. So the next step is that we are able to announce two working groups to start in 2022. We have three active at this moment. The first one is on 
the Internet of Things Security by Design, the second one is the Education and Skills one, and the third one is on Data Governance and Security. But the th third one, that was the fourth one, is it literally a working group through to three, sorry, because we had devised that already over two years ago, but finally we found the funding to start it. And Mallory Nodal has been waiting all these years to actually start the work, but she's going to present on what, we are, what our plans are for the very near future and what sort of outcomes that we, we, we are going to present at the next IGF. Mallory. Yeah, so happy to, um, as Wout said, just checking my notes here. So the point um, of the third working group is very much, um, I would describe it now, if you were in the room for the previous session, um, trying to actually analyze and understand what are some of the barriers then to procuring um, products, software, hardware that has implemented the proper standards. Um, and so I think there's a lot more to it than that. So of course, one of the first steps of this work is to research what's already been done, what our groups um, already focused on, knowing that there may be um, procurement policies and supply chain management considerations in many different governments already, um, in industries and so on. So trying to um, scope and map the current landscape. It's a pretty typical first step. So we'll be asking for interested researchers to help us with that first issue paper. Um, I think what's important about also the methodology we've devised or the, the approach we're taking is that because this is a dynamic coalition, uh, we want to bring folks along with us. So if we are um, discovering or citing publications, we want those authors to know about our work so they could potentially get involved. Um, if we have researchers coming along, we're doing qualitative um, interviews, we want the interviewees and the researchers to stay engaged in this dynamic coalition for the long term. So that's one of the other sort of objectives of this work is to not just produce um, knowledge but also um, create a community around this issue. Um, another thing to note about the way we've developed about the way that we've devised the work um, is that we want to make this as specific to the IGF's mandate as possible. So recognizing um, the UN and the IGF in particular has a certain sphere of influence, has a certain perspective that could be different than one single government or even regions or industry. We want to make sure that our, um, that our issues and our guidance are aligned with what the IGF is scoped to, to do, and not be duplicative, but as synergetic as possible. Um, once we've scoped and mapped and analyzed, I think then the, the point will be actually to issue guidance. And I think we should take the time we need on that first step to ensure that the guidance we produce is actually actionable um, and relevant. So um, we shouldn't, I think, get too, in, too much in a hurry to, to do that guidance work. Um, but of course, then once we have guidance out, it can also can always change, and it's not the end of the conversation. Um, in many cases, it might be um, the beginning for folks who are just going to be getting involved, and will find um, that guidance actually useful. So anyway, that's um, hopefully a um, pretty straightforward explanation of the the how the approach we're going to take. Um, and so, for interested folks um, in that work, we can obviously take a more um, activity-based or step-by-step -step approach to that, but I'm envisioning this to be very much a, a group research exercise. Um, and so, yeah, hoping for participation from, from the community. Uh, thank you, Mallory. And what my personal opinion about the work that we are doing is, is that this topic is probably the most important one that we will do without disqualifying all the others, of course, because they, they all do important work. But the fact is that if governments and large organizations are going to adhere to the principles that we will be identifying around the world, then that will mean that it become, becomes a driver for industry to actually deploy these modern standards. Because if you go into a procurement process where, where the standards are not adhered to by the, the company applying for the procurement, then it will not get the assignment. 
So that should be the basis of every procurement process in the near future to make sure that you buy secured by design. And whether that is for IoT, whether it's for email, for, for transport on the internet, or for software, that will be a driver to become more secure. Um, the next working group that we'll be announcing that starts work in 2023 is going to be led by myself. And we call that the list, basically, a bit unofficially. The idea behind that is that if you are a government anywhere around the world and you are confronted with all the standards that are out there all at once, probably you will not even start thinking about them because there are too many of them. So if we can identify, and that is going to be what we are going to try to do, identify a consensus on, let's say, the top 40 most important standards and ICT best practices related to cybersecurity and present that to the world to start working with, that would be a tremendous incentive to, to actually start working with them because you can for a while ignore the others. The idea that we have to start that is to find experts around the world that are willing to sit into three, four or five sessions over a year to identify not only the standards but also the categories of standards, what we should devise them in, divide them in, to make sure that it, is, it takes up all the different elements of cybersecurity. So not just your ISP, but also your hosting, your website, your, your software, et cetera. So that from all angles, there will be an advice on cybersecurity. These experts will we try to find within, for example, the Internet Engineering Task Force from the, the World Wide Web co uh, co Coalition, but also the, in the, the IEEE, which stands for Electronic Engineers something, do you know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know everything by heart, but also, for example, ICANN and the, and the RIRs, so that we have a very diverse set of experts that come to some sort of a consensus to make sure that we're going to present this list. There, there is at least one example in the world that I know of, that is the, the, the Dutch list containing, I think at this moment, 46 standards, and is aimed at government voluntarily, but it is called the, the, the either apply or explain list. And the explain is on why do you not buy secure by design, for what is the reason that you have to explain that to the, so a, a government agency. So that is something which is a mild driver for governments to procure the, along the line of these standards, and it will be one of the best practices that we'll be looking into. The second list that we are going to try to compile is to have the complete overview. So what are we talking about when we talk about cybersecurity related internet standards and best practices? So if we can have a repository like that, which is also a live repository, it would mean that anybody could access that list to see what is it actually what I have to deploy? Why am I deploying it? What is the issue? What does it solve? And where do I get the official information if I need more information on that specific standard? So that's something that we hope to start with the diverse standard making bodies and to make sure that this list is hosted somewhere where it can be live and, and, and also uh, taken care of basically. So that are the two things that we are going to try uh, to do in 2023 and that we got the funding of to start to work on. And uh, the first reach out has been made here at the IGF with, uh, with uh, the persons within, within organizations to, to actually start participating. So that is uh, the number five. Um, the next one that we will hope to say something about is working group seven on consumer advocacy. And that is something we are uh, investigating at this point in time with representatives of the Brazilian government. And uh, hopefully the, we can start that somewhere in 2023. So th this is not announced, but it's, it's in the works. And th the idea behind that is, is when government or uh, consumer organizations test, test products with IoT components, usually what they test is the, is the quality of the refrigerator or the coffee machine or the telephone, does the light work? How does it open? Does it close right? You know, and the, the, the environmental stuff behind it. But the ICT component in it is often not tested. So if that is insecure, everybody buys an insecure fridge IoT device. So if 
consumer organizations get some sort of a blueprint on how to test the IoT components in, their pro in these products they test, that would show whether the, the, the producer of the manufacturer of these devices actually comes up with a secure device. And you can make it literally a choice, hey, this is a insecure device, I'm not going to buy that one, I'm going to buy that one. And th the different industries involved see, hey, I've got a green one and the other one's got red or the other way around, perhaps I want to get a green one as well. And then you can see the internet dot L thing with the Hall of Fame saying, hey, my competitor has 100% and I score 15, I better get working to get that 100% as well. So that could be a driver for I another driver for industry to actually adopt the standards that are available. Uh, the next working group that we'll be uh, presenting is on um, the quantum computing, and we have two proposals for that, but the first proposal, the lady could not join today because of family circumstances. The, the other can, so I'm giving the word to, to Elif uh, Kizo. You are online, I hope, so Elif, yes. please, uh, please take over. Is it, is it possible to hear me? Yes, I hear you. Thank you, Elif. Okay, thank you. I'm Elif Kizo Cortez. Currently, I'm based in the Netherlands. As Wout mentioned in the opening, regarding the plans for 2023, I would like to suggest that our DC creates a new working group focusing on the governance of two emerging fields, AI and quantum technologies. I think these technologies would fit in our mandate given their dual use nature. We observe that there is increasing attention both from the tech companies in terms of investments and from the policymakers in terms of regulatory efforts such as the AI acts both in the EU and in the US. I think that research into security risk mapping will become even more crucial in the coming years. Therefore, we believe that having a new working group on the governance of emerging technologies would fit our coalition's mission very well. There is also breakthrough developments in the quantum technology field at the moment. Big tech companies such as Amazon, IBM, Google and Microsoft already reported that they have launched departments dedicated to quantum technology. And in its March 2022 report, the U.S. National Science and Technology Council stated that in the next one to three years, agencies should be established for addressing the legal and policy issues associated with quantum technology. As this timeline and current developments demonstrate, this would be a great moment for our coalition to get involved in the governance discussions of these two domains. I envision that the mission of this working group will be to offer a roadmap for anticipatory governance strategies for the field of emerging technologies, initially focusing on AI and quantum technology. The proposed governance roadmap will be addressing the relevant roles of the state, the private sector and civil society stakeholders based on the lessons learned from past governance efforts concerning complex technology domains. We observe that there are several funding options in both of these domains, so we expect that we will be also able to attract external funding for this new working group from institutions willing to be in a leading position in the governance efforts of these fields. We envision that the deliverables for this working group will include mapping current risks and opportunities associated with these domains, providing policy recommendation report with input from diverse stakeholders, as well as helping with standardization guidelines based on this policy recommendation report. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing your feedback. Uh, thank you, Elif. And um, uh, I just remembered that I received the mission statement of uh, Narine Katshatrian, I hope I pronounced that right, from Armenia on uh, the same topic. So we will be investigating whether they uh, are to be merged in the near future or that they are truly separate. But it's also on uh, quantum computing and post-quantum computing and excuse me for reading her, her document. It says, in recent years, there has been a substantial amount of research on quantum computers, machines that exploit quantum mechanical phenomena uh, 
to solve mathematical problems that are difficult or intractable for classical computers. When quantum computers become available in mass use by governments and companies, all public and private keys will be exposed to a mass massive risk. This could be serious compromise the confidentiality and integrity of digital communications on the internet and elsewhere. On the other hand, cryptography is evolving too, and the development of, post, uh, of quantum resistant or post-quantum cryptography helps to create crypto cryptographic systems that are secure against both quantum and classical computers, while being interoperable with existing protocols and networks. This creates new public key infrastructure challenges and the need to update cryptographic algorithms recently in use. As quantum computing emerges, security standards will change. To what extent organizations from North America or Euro and Europe to Middle East and Africa, and I suppose everywhere else, are ready and prepared for, for, prepared for the quantum computer era? Do they have skilled crypto experts for effective management and adaptation of the, their PKI infrastructures and machine identities to new algorithms, standards, and environments? What skill gaps do they have? As the IOC coalition ha has established, well, we are in the process of establishing this working group nine called Quantum Computing and Post-Quantum Encryption with the specific aim of reviewing current quantum computing and quantum encryption initiatives and practices around the world, developing a coherent package of global recommendations, maintaining relationships with related technical community security leaders, engineers, developers, and other interested organizations. Among the far-reaching far goals we propose, the development of best practices on encryption, support the quantum-safe cryptography community in development and deployment of relevant frameworks to protect data in movement or data at rest. At this moment, this working group is based on voluntary contributions of experts and who will well, we would welcome anyone who would like to join in this work. So that is another uh, working group that we hope to start in 2023 because it's not uh, currently active. But this is the, the, the mission statement that was developed by Narine, and uh, hopefully she will be able to join on Thursday in our, our session then. Uh, th thank you, Nico, for joining us uh, because I understand you were leading another session just now. Uh, Nicolas Fiumarelli is the chair of our working group one on uh, security by design for the Internet of Things. We are uh, going to present as a dynamic coalition our draft report pretty soon, which we will not go into depth here, but we will be talking about the work in 2023 that has been identified. So Nico, the mic is yours. Thank you, Vlad. Hello, everyone. Nicolas Fiumarelli here. I will share the screen rapidly for you. But I will, we are here to, in the networking session to talk about the future, right? So what we did this year was a report on a research about the Internet of Things security with more than 30 policy documents from all around the world that are focused on IoT cybersecurity. Um, well, we, we were trying to do a top 20 of best practices that could be a good recommendation for policymakers in order to include the Internet of Things security in the national plans. Um, uh, we, we, we know that the Internet of Things is, uh, the devices connected to the Internet are increasing uh, from year to year. Uh, this is a graphic that, that shows that, for example. You can see that in 2030 is expected to have more than 30,000 million devices connected to the Internet from the IoT devices. So there are a lot of threats in the Internet of Things, you know, the uh, denial of service attacks and uh, the combination of these devices can be used to, to attack a, a server so, uh, and other factors, right, like personal data, sensitive data being shared uh, with thieves, uh, malware corruption of the, the firmware uh, inside the devices. So there are a lot of things. This is a, an average, uh, an overall of the research that take part. We have different kind of documents. We started, we, we didn't take into account the, the recommendations from the standardization entities, but we started from the policy documents, the regulatory documents, because we wanted to know what are the current practices being taking place in terms of requirements or recommendations, but from the policy making, right, from current national government policies, regulatory frameworks, and code of practices. So, uh, for the future, uh, we would like to know uh, we have some questions for you on uh, how to proceed with, with this research. Uh, we know that in 2022 there is a lot of laws on, on cybersecurity being working. Uh, 
in a way to to include all the, uh, these best practices in in the report and we we would like to know well what do you think because uh, this is a, a major topic right it's a it's an issue that is we are currently facing and with the expected quantity of devices in the following years uh, we will be in a situation that we will need to take uh, some actions to to be prepared for what the attacks will be how we can protect our devices and at the end, uh, that is the idea, right? To protect the personal data and sensitive data that could be uh, bad used. So at the end, <laughs> it's a whole issue. So we'd like to know for the audience, uh, the last part, what, what are your ideas for our future work uh, here at the IS3C on regarding uh, the different working groups and specifically uh, on the working group one that is the Internet of Things Security by Design. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. And then the final working group that somebody has announced to, to start in the near future is on three specific standards. That would be DNSSEC, RPKI, and IP version four, uh, six, sorry, to have them to deploy it. And the idea behind that is to, to start a working group on, on bringing different stakeholders together so that it's discussed not from the technical angle, but from a, a deployment angle. Just like Mallory says, what are the obstacles? And if we focus on three different standards, that may actually help the exercise in the future as well. And that is an idea somebody brought up, which we will be looking into pretty soon. So that basically ends our presentation, and that leads to the opportunity to have some interactive conversation. So who has any questions on the work that we've been doing and that you are able to, to ask now? So the, the, the floor is basically to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate your presentation. Mm, my name is Asnaka. I think it's difficult. Uh, my name may be Asnaka. Uh, it's Ethiopian name. So I am working with the Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, regarding to my question or suggestion, there are a uh, few Ethiopians or a lot of Ethiopian new graduate students in different universities. We have more than 40 universities in it. Ethiopia. They are graduates with engineering, ICT, and uh, other uh, departments. So, uh, based on your presentation, the few students maybe need skill training uh, regarding to your presentation, like quantum uh, digital technology, like that. They don't have skill training. So, uh, do you give still skill training for uh, for them? Or do you want, do you have a plan to give a scholarship uh, for training that uh, devices for Ethiopian new graduate students, including me, because I have no PhD program. So if you give me PhD scholarship for training your device, I will come to your country. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that question. I'll take it first, and then maybe Turing, you would like to add on the basis of what we found. Um, we are identifying the. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> we are d identifying the, the skill gaps in education and what we have found is that the, the we, let's explain first that we've interviewed people around the world and we did a survey and in total we had responses from 66 different countries and literally from everywhere in the world. And from Africa and the Asian Pacific especially, we heard from people working in the ICT industry that they had lack a lot of the skills necessary to work in the industry, but what they also lacked is that they could not find the right sort of training online. There were no training courses online explaining specific topics. And I think that we will not be able to, be, uh, to teach or give teaching programs because we're just identifying the skill gap. We have done that. Uh, I have the reports since about 15 minutes in front of me. We're going to present that tomorrow at 16.15. What we are going to try and do in the future, as, as Teuntje just explained, is to set up working committees in regions in the world to discuss this skill gap and how to close it in the future. So that means that we have to bring together 
different sort of stakeholders. It's not just the schools, it's not just the government, it's not just singly the industry. I think the three of them together with academia will have to decide on how do we make our curricula literally up to date so that a teacher is not teaching the skills of 20 years ago, but is teaching the skills maybe of two years ago, but not 20 years ago. And that is a program that we may, if we find the funding, be able to set up a toolkit for and some sort of a capacity training program, which we can then hand over to the regions and say, okay, we've developed this, now it's up to you to go to your national countries and make sure that it is deployed. Because that's the extent that we in our little configuration that we are, are hopefully can get to. But if we achieve that, then everybody has a toolkit to work on these skills together and perhaps to set up these online trainings for, yo for youth around the world to keep their skills up to date. Because if we could get to that level that people would start providing this sort of knowledge online, that would help the world tremendously. But that is, I think, as far as we can go. But we, don't, we can't give any scholarships or whatever because we have a very small dynamic coalition with very limited funding. But we do hope to provide the toolkit. Would you like to add thank you? Um, yeah. I think one thing I would like to add is that we are aiming to get the education and the industry to work together better. Because if we know what the, what the industry expects from the graduates, then it's easier to adapt the education to that. And that is what yeah, is missing in the gap right now. So we need the industry and the education to work together better. Thank you, Terry. And I know that Avo is online now. Would, would, no, she's not? Oh, oh, she's gone. Okay. So she's, uh, Abo is the vice chair of this uh, working group. Uh, she uh, was supposed to be online, but apparently there is some issue there. Uh, luckily, Terentje was able to, to step in at, at the last moment, so th thank you for that. Um, is there another question? So we've been extremely clear, I think. <laughs> so, so thank you for that. Um, is there any comment online, Mark, that we, you would like to share? I'm following the chat and uh, I've invited people and, and tried to stimulate some discussion online with questions like uh, what can we contribute to the Global Digital Compact, for example, uh, as well as uh, you know, if, if people look at our priorities, as Wout has described, we're, we're extending into uh, new areas uh, on the basis of proposals we've received from uh, uh, individuals uh, for the future expansion of the scope of the coalition. So, I, I, as I say, I in, I'm inviting uh, people online as well as in the room to comment on our priorities, bearing in mind our potential contribution to the Global Digital Compact. So I put that thought out to you, if uh, in the hope that somebody might wish to um, comment, react. Back to you, Vout. Uh, thank you. Is there anyone who would like to comment in the context of the Global Digital Compact? No? Then I'm going to look at the panel for the famous last words, and I'll, then I'll start with you, Mallory. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I, I wanted to reflect after hearing um, others present and um, questions from the floor on the, the real theory of change here. I think one of the things we... Um, in, in trying to solve this problem, and for those of you that were present in the session just before this, um, there's there are just many different gaps all along the the path here, from um, creating secure standards to then end users being surrounded by products and services that actually implement those standards. Um, it's far more complicated um, than I think any one effort so far has managed to address and maybe the point here is that we're we're kind of looking at all the different problem spaces but one of them that I know I will come up against in um, the work to research procurement and su and supply chain issues is that there may simply not be enough products out there 
um, that would that would meet a high bar for um, security um, and safety in in procurement policies, and then so you have some tensions with um, with that fact. So if there aren't enough products that meet your high standard, then you have also potentially competition issues. You might have um, monopoly issues if. Um, the standards are not always open. We assume we're talking about open security standards, but sometimes they're not open. Um, there are plenty of standards for a where um, you know issuing the standard is, is part of their business model. Um, so I'm just thinking about um, you know in a year from now or so on, we might actually have a lot better idea of like what are the hard problems because there are inherent tensions between um, you know creating products um, that are like in a competitive market that then um, we, c we, can, we can leverage to make sure they're ubiquitous. I'm just not sure that that's always as easy as it sounds. Well, thank you, Mallory, because yes, obviously there are a lot of obstacles in this, in this field, otherwise these standards would have been deployed 20 years ago, um, because some of them are around for more than 20 years. I see a question, but I'll first go around the room and then I'll give you the word. Is the first, uh, sorry, I first go down the table. Terry. So thank you all for being here and for listening to us. As Wout said, uh, tomorrow we will be presenting the report. And I would say the report is only the first step. We defined the gap and the next step is to, is to well, hopefully solve the gap and to work on that. So if you have anything to add or if you could contribute in any way, feel free to reach out and we're looking for best practices, but we're also looking for problems that you need best practices for. So if you feel like anything is missing in education, or if you're in the industry and you feel like something is missing in the skills of the graduates, then feel very free to reach out to us. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Nico? Yes, about the Global Digital Compact, well, you know that there is a roadmap of the Global Digital Compact by the Secretary General, and we, every company, every organization around the world can uh, contribute uh, to the Global Digital Compact until March 2023. And for the IS3C work regarding the Global Digital Compact, I identified three of the key points of the roadmap that are on one way promoted digital trust and security. This could be made by a uh, deploying all the standards that have been proved that solves some of the security issues around the world. There are several standardizing entities that we are looking for, uh, uh, all the report. And another one is ensuring the protection of human rights in the digital era. While deploying these standards, you will be helping in, in pre preventing these threats to happen, right? Uh, not only about the, the IoT security, but for example, new emerging working groups like the RPKI, DNSSEC are all, always in the same page, right? Because man in the middle attacks, hijacking routing. So there are several threats, and ensuring the protection of, of these human rights will be like a link uh, with the global digital compact. And the last one is strengthening digital capacity building, as we have told, because uh, it, there is a need for digital skills for the workers on the cybersecurity market or uh, at different organizations to take into account all these things and, and to know what, what, what they need to to do to protect uh, their products, to protect their citizens. So that, that, that will be my comment. So there is a, a link with three of the uh, key points of, from the Global Digital Comp. Sir, your, your question, please. Yes, uh, uh, I, I will give you a kind of opinion, not question. Uh, as if I tell you before, I was working in the Ministry of Technology in Ethiopia. So uh, maybe this is a good opportunity to announce uh, my own uh, views. Uh, so uh, under the Ministry of Technology, we have Innovation and Technology Department. Under that, we have uh, make uh, different countries based on the embassy interest or consular interest. Those who are a researcher or an innovator can have a memorandum understanding with their embassy, based on their embassy. So it's open to our door to memorandum understanding, signing with different projects, technology. So if you have, uh, you will come based on your embassy interest and the, your, your country researcher. So w maybe we have long term, short term and uh, uh, medium term training, including uh, you know knowledge sharing program. So you welcome to any country uh, from this compound. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, the other, the other, like to make comments? Yes. Here. 
Hello, uh, my name is Matheus Lima, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit, bit nervous. This is my first IGF and this is my first question. Uh, I'm from <laughs> a youth program from CGI. Uh, I, uh, I want to know how uh, the young ones like me can engage in the activities or the working groups. There are two next to you who know exactly how to do that. <laughs> Savio and Joao. Uh, that that fir the first step, and I also respond to you, sir, that also your youth were at researching at this moment were are very welcome to join this initiative. You, the first step you have to take is to go to the IGF website, log in and then register at the Dynamic Coalition on Internet Standards, Security and Safety. You sign up to an email list, but that means that you become, between brackets, a member. And that means that you get all the information about work groups that start, working groups that start, information questions, research questions that you can participate in. So at, at that point in time, you can actually start saying, I want to be a part of working group three, or working groups five, or whatever number, and then you become an active contributor to, to this process. And with that, everybody from around the world is literally welcome to join this process because the more voices we have and the more knowledge we can are able to, to, to get into this dynamic coalition, the better and more effective our programs probably are going to be. So for, for, for both of you, please join uh, or so tell your colleagues to join because that way we'll have more voices to the table and, 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 and with that, I'll almost have my concluding remarks. But I look at Mark for any final comments from online and from yourself, Mark, and then I'll conclude the session. Yes, thank you, Vart. I don't see any um, new comments uh, online. Um, but I, I would just like to add one point, and, uh, and I thank the um, gentleman from the uh, Ministry of Technology uh, here, here in Ethiopia for, for that contribution. And, and my point is that you know, it's important for dynamic coalitions like this to be aware of potential interest of other initiatives, of other, other government uh, departments, ministries, looking at this whole area of cybersecurity online and uh, identifying ways that uh, through collaboration, cooperation and engagement in IGF initiatives like this dynamic coalition, we can make progress in resolving some of those problems. Um, and some of the emerging ones that uh, solutions have yet to be uh, identified for. We're in that business. That's the, that's the aim of this coalition. Uh, our strap line is uh, making the internet more secure and safer. So I invite uh, participants here to, to let us know, you know if they are aware of initiatives that are happening similar to ours, where there could be useful synergies in all regions, that would be very valuable information for us. And also events, opportunities for this coalition to promote uh, uh, its, uh, its profile and, uh, and disseminate its outcomes, like the report on, on skills that uh, Turntier was, uh, was uh, describing earlier. We've got a report and we, can, you know, we need to find opportunities to, to um, promote awareness of that report and to get feedback and to build on that report and undertake further work, as Tuntia described. So thank you very much for coming today, and we really appreciate your interest. And please network beyond this networking session to help us advance the work further. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Mark, and, and thank you, panel, also Elif uh, online, for contributing to this networking session, because I think it shows exactly how ambitious we are in trying to get this topic of deployment of internet standards across. Uh, with that, um, let me just point out that we already discussed the need to have people contributing to this, uh, willing to do a little bit of the research to help the, the project lead who has to write the final report to get the right content from around the world and initiatives so that we know what initiatives are around in your countries. So that is the thing, I think that's something you, you can help us with. The other thing is that we're looking for funding where we've been funded so far 
by several different sort of organizations. Uh, we're now going to be funded by the RIPE NCC fund, fund of the RIPE fund. We've been funded by the SIDN, the .nl fund, SIDN itself, but also Microsoft, uh, but also NASC in Poland. So we have a very diverse set of, of, of people who are of organizations that are sponsoring our work. And that's something that we're looking for in the future as well and work hard on uh, almost every day to make sure that the, the work that we devise is also going to be taken care of basically uh, so that in the IGF in Japan in 2023 we do are able to make new presentations or new reports but also to have this the, the recommendations and guidelines coming out of the re report recognized as an IGF out output. I think that is something which is going to be tremendously important as well, because in the end it has to be recognized as an official outcome of an IGF process. And that is something we'll be discussing this afternoon, how to bring that further forward. But without that, uh, uh, without ado, I think uh, I want to thank you for your contributions here, for being present also online. And that, let's hope that we can be even more successful in the future, because if I look where we come from, from two years ago when we started, I think that we have made tremendous progress with presenting a report, uh, two draft reports at this, at this IGF, and hopefully next year maybe even four. So let, let us take forward and thank you for being here, and have a very good rest of the IGF and safe trip home. Bye-bye.